Hey guys, welcome back inside of the Plastic Planet. I am your host, Nick Knack, hanging out with you guys tonight. Guys, I guess it's been almost two years since I last showed off this particular room in a full-on room tour. This, of course, is my premium Star Wars room for the most part. There's some sideshow in here. There's some hot toys in here. Uh, there is some vintage and other Star Wars collectibles. All of it is a little bit on the higher end. Uh, so to speak, with a few exceptions here or there. Uh, but anyway, I think it's time to show it off, guys. It's been a while. I've done some done some changes in here, and I've added quite a bit of stuff. So I think it's time to, eh, you know, to give it give it its its due and give you guys a full room tour. So let's get to it, guys. Let's get to it right now. We've been celebrating The Empire Strikes Back all month here on the Plastic Planet here in May of 2020, being its 40th anniversary. And what better way to uh, to ring it out or to uh, to 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 say adieu to it than to do a full-on room tour of my Star Wars collection. So let's do it. Let's do it right now. Nick Nack's Plastic Planet. With your host, it's Nick Nack. Alrighty guys, well I am on the steps here going down into the, the Plastic Planet, or at least the first wing of the Plastic Planet, which of course is my previously mentioned Star Wars collection room. And as you go down here, I've got a, a cool C-3PO cheap end fathead. It's not really a fathead, it was some kind of wall vinyl, but it's pretty cool. And then up here is pretty neat. I haven't shown this case off since uh, very early in the channel, but that's basically a shotgun, uh, shotgun shot glass case I bought at Michael's full of three and three quarter inch astromech droids. So that's pretty fun. I'd open it up, but it'd probably all fall out. So uh, yeah, there's, there's another Star Wars poster over here. And then you come down into the room and you see it in all its glory. And I'll give you guys a quick sort of 360 of it to start things out. And then I'll go uh, shelf by shelf. But anyway, here it is. It just kind of rolls across here. And then of course you've got my two large Detolf banks going across this wall here. And there it all is in all of its glory. I'm going to try to go really slow so that A, you guys can kind of get a look and get a feel for it, and B, I'm not making you too dizzy. So anyway, here it all is. But uh, it's a fantastic room. I have turned on most everything that requires batteries or electronics, with a few exceptions. But here it all is. There's some original artwork on the wall here and movie posters all the way around. So anyway, all right, I'm going to start out over in this corner here and we'll just work our way around. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Alrighty guys, well first and foremost here, I got a trash can there. That is a vintage Return of the Jedi trash can. Picked that up at a antique store just a couple years ago, but I actually had that exact same trash can, not this exact same trash can, but uh, that exact same uh, trash can when I was a kid. So it was really cool and really fun to get that back in my collection. Of course, there is my legacy AT-AT Walker right next to it along with some posters. There's a there's a poster my wife got for me a couple years ago that is actually, I believe that is the Hasbro blueprints to the three and three quarter inch Tiderium shuttle sold back in 1983, 1984. That's really cool. And moving up, there's just some more, some more little small movie posters and such. And there's a lot of reflection coming off these, so I won't spend too much time. But then on this wall here is actually a light up movie poster that I put together myself those Star Destroyers there, and you guys can see the premium format Darth Vader in front of it, just to give you guys a sense of scale. It's actually pretty damn big. It fills up the whole corner of the room here. And all that is is a silk poster that I purchased. I think I bought it off eBay from a foreign seller and um, for not a lot of money. And then I put together the frame just out of some wood, some scrap wood in the backyard, stretched it across like a canvas, and then backlit it with just a really cheapo, uh, cheapo uh, uh, desk lamp, LED desk lamp behind it, and it, it looks fantastic. I've always been a real fan, as I, as I mentioned previously in my other videos when I was talking about this, I've always been a fan of like going to the planetarium, you know, and all the, all the, all the backlit like astronomy posters that kind of flank the walls there. So I, ever since I was a kid, I always wanted something like that in my house. Now I have something similar. It's a little bit on the cheap how I did it, but it looks pretty cool. 
Alrighty guys, moving down from that cool poster is of course is my before mentioned premium format. I think this is from Return of the Jedi, Darth Vader from Sideshow Collectibles. Really nice piece. I don't have them all lit up. I just have the one that the, the light up features that plug into the wall. Um, his chest does light up if you've had this piece. So does his two belt boxes. But I don't have those going right now. But I really love just the ambiance and the color that comes off his saber there. And just the way it kind of reflects off of him. And then with the, that backdrop just looks absolutely fantastic. I was kind of working on trying to put like an imperial window between him and the, and the poster there. But I, I haven't gotten real far on that project. Maybe someday. But uh, it looks really damn cool. Really do love that. I also have a... Uh, a master replica lightsaber that I bought from an antique store. Didn't come with a stand. Also have the Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker one as well. It is master replicas. It does say master replicas on it, but it didn't come with a stand, which might have been stolen or something and then resold. I don't know, because I did get a really good price on them. I don't remember what I paid for them, but I didn't pay a lot. Uh, but they are solid. They are solid die cast. Uh, you know, there's plastic there too, but they are solid die cast. They are pretty amazing pieces. And uh, yeah, they look pretty awesome. Alrighty guys, moving down the shelves here, I've got my two Obi-Wan Kenobis. This of course is the Obi-Wan Kenobi Hot Toys uh, right here with Baby Luke Skywalker. That is from Revenge of the Sith, really awesome piece. And this uh, Emperor and uh, I guess it would be Darth Vader, not Anakin Skywalker at that point, that hologram there uh, came with him as an accessory. Really cool, I really light it up for, for the sake of the tour tonight. I gave that sucker a, a, a light up. So it looks pretty damn good. And then behind him is the Mythos Obi-Wan. That is done by Sideshow Collectibles. And then an older Sideshow Collectibles Yoda there, a prequel Yoda, uh, right there standing on that brick. So really cool shelf. Uh, yeah, I like that a lot. It looks pretty damn good. And then coming down here, I have got my Sideshow Collectibles Biker Scout with a uh, with a little bit of an indoor environmental uh, diorama that I built myself. And as you guys can see, the backdrop doesn't look that good. It's sort of a mishmash of, of different pictures I printed off from the uh, California Redwood Forest just to kind of give it a little bit of a background. And then of course the, uh, the, 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 the landscape there I made out of the pieces, the, the, some of the accessories that he came with, um, like this log for instance. But then I also bought some, uh, then I also bought some, uh, some train set uh, accessories and some also some like fish tank uh, plants. That kind of look that make those ferns look about that looks about one six scale so it looks pretty awesome i don't know I, I like it a lot it's not like a a super designer diorama but i think it looks pretty good all righty guys and in that same theme there there is my biker scout pistol that i bought that not that i bought my parents bought for me when i was just a kid i've had that in my collection for years and years so that is a childhood piece going up next to my hot toys dx7 non-battle damage Luke Skywalker with my Hot Toys R2-D2 all lit up there with a 40th anniversary brand new modern lunchbox there and then a vintage Empire Strikes Back lunchbox right over there. It's a really nice piece. Oh, and this this little this little stand that they're on, that actually came with my Kotobukiya uh, Darth Vader that I had years ago that kind of fell apart. So I'm just still using the stand. I think it looks pretty good. Alrighty guys, and as we move up here, here is sort of my A New Hope uh, shelf that I have with all my hot toys from A New Hope, minus that Chewbacca, which actually is technically a Force Awakens Chewbacca, but we won't hold that against him. Uh, this is a really nice shelf, though. I really dig it a lot. Got my hot toys, uh, uh, A New Hope Farm Boy Luke Skywalker, New Hope Hot Toys Princess Leia, Han Solo, Obi-Wan, Ben Kenobi, and then, like I said, that Chewbacca is from The Force Awakens, but I think he looks pretty good with uh, these uh, particular figures. Really, really awesome. I don't have that lightsaber turned on. Let's see if I can turn that on for you guys. See if you can tell the difference. It's kind of low on batteries. There it is. That looks pretty good. So his lightsaber is lit up for you guys, at least at least temporarily. That looks pretty damn nice. So I really do like how I have this set up. This is something that I see all the time when I'm over here, you know, watching TV. And uh, so yeah, it looks really, really, really dynamite. Let's turn that lightsaber off before I forget it though. Yeah, there we go. Alrighty, so back up here on the shelf is my premium format, Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker. One of the better uh, better pieces that really, I think, captures Mark Hamill's likeness pretty well, even though this is an older piece. I think this one came out in about 2008, I want to say. But yeah, I've had him for a long time, but he looks really dynamite. Really dig having him next to this uh, Vader as well. So that's a, that's a really nice pairing, even though his saber, which is lit up, doesn't, it's an, it's an older piece. The LED didn't go all the way through like they do on, on the more modern pieces. So that's unfortunate, but it still is really nice. Of course, as we come along this wall here, I've got all of my 
24 or 27 by 40 uh, original trilogy movie posters there. Uh, up against that back wall, I do have some lighting on the back side of the television set. And yeah, it looks really damn awesome. Um, I like that a lot. It looks really good. And it does kind of just kind of kind of lights those up a little bit, those posters up. They look really fantastic. And then, of course, right here is my premium format Empire Strikes Back Luke Skywalker from Sideshow Collectibles. This piece just came, I got him within the last year, year and a half. I think I actually got him about a year ago. Did a full review on this channel of him. Uh, my review at the time was a little bit of a mixed bag, but he's definitely grown on me since then, having him in my collection. He's also up really, really high, which kind of helps. Uh, I don't see some of the flaws in it all the time, but it's still, it's a really good piece. Maybe not worth the money that I spent on it. It is north of $500, but it is a nice piece. And then as we go over here, I got my new Hope poster, and of course, the oldest sideshow piece I own. That is, of course, the premium format Luke Skywalker, one of the original Star Wars pieces to come out from Sideshow Collectibles back in the mid-2000s. I still like this piece a lot. Yeah, he's kind of, he, he's his, his sculpt isn't exactly modern. You know, he, he doesn't hold up like some of the other pieces I have, but he still looks really good. And such an iconic, such an iconic uh, uh, depiction from the original Star Wars. I really dig that a lot. Alrighty, so coming down the shelf here, down here, that's my BB gun back there. That's not a real gun. That's just a BB gun. That's just for fun. Coming down here, I do have the Sideshow Collectibles c 3 review and R2-D2 Premium Format. I believe this was the second uh, run of these particular uh, uh, this particular statue set. Uh, they were sold separately, but I did buy them both, obviously. Uh, the first set came with more of a Tatooine sand base. This one came with, like, I think it looks it's supposed to be the Millennium Falcon uh, deck plating there, but really, really awesome. They look really good lit up, although they're bad. The R2, especially the batteries, don't last real long on him. So uh, yeah, as soon as I get this uh, filmed, I'm gonna probably turn him off. But yeah, really nice pieces. I, I really dig them a lot. And of course, coming over here, we've got a Hallmark mini uh, Star Wars lunchbox. That's like an ornamental lunchbox. Obviously, it's not exactly scale, but those came out in the early 2000s. Really fun little collectibles if you don't have the real deal. And there, of course, there are my Metacom c 3 and R2-D2. Those are really out of scale for 1-6 scale figures, but I still like them a lot. And you can't beat those light-up features on those. The R2 looks exceptional. And look at C-3PO. I love the eyes on C-3PO. It's just... That just absolutely pops. It looks absolutely fantastic. So those are pretty nice pieces. And then over here, I've got a little bit of a shadow box diorama. That is a black series, Luke Skywalker with his uh, land speeder there. And I kind of made this, uh, kind of made this, uh, this little diorama piece. I've got some lighting in there too that's sort of changing colors on you. That's why that's kind of going in and out of shade there. But I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Nice sand base there. It's I've got some. I've actually just got some some chintzy tape holding that sand in, but it's, it's worked for almost two years now. Uh, and I and I kind of stole that pose from another YouTuber. Absolutely love that pose of Luke Skywalker just kind of kicking back on his land speeder, dreaming of dreaming of escaping the the bonds of Tatooine and and exploring the galaxy with the twin binary suns bit behind. Him. Absolutely awesome. Love that a lot. And moving over here again, this is a this is an ornamental mini lunchbox from Hallmark. Came out in the early 2000s. The Empire Strikes Back. And right next to it is my uh, is my Fives and Echo uh, Sideshow Collectibles Clone Troopers. Looking really cool. That's kind of a rare set now. I don't see that a lot of places. Um, I don't know if it's worth a lot of money, but. It's pretty cool. I, I dig it a lot, especially after watching the the last uh, the last uh, series or the season of the Clone Wars. Kind of put these guys more center in my collection after watching that, after having them for years, kind of tucked away. So really awesome, really cool. And then right here is my sort of my Ewok section. There, I've got a vintage lunchbox my wife picked up for me. That's the real deal there. That's a real vintage Return of the Jedi lunchbox uh, with a couple Hasbro Ewoks. Really cool. Don't have any really good Ewoks in 1-6 scale yet in my collection, but I do have that Wicked and Princess Leia on pre-order from Hot Toys, so that'll hopefully get remedied here in the near future. And then, of course, right there is my Return of the Jedi Hallmark mini lunch box with my Padme uh, Black Series figure there. I've got a couple other Black Series here, and I find it really nice to kind of use Black Series as sort of a sort of accent pieces and to kind of cluster them together. Um, I'm a really big, firm believer as far as uh, 
as far as a uh, display goes to uh, each individual piece should usually have a, a, a companion piece to go with it, at least one or two. And so I put these two together, these three together. I'm sorry. This is sort of the Trinity from the original trilogy, Luke Han and Princess Leia there. Uh, all three of these are from the 40th anniversary black series Empire Strikes Back collection that just came out this month and is probably available still at your Walmarts or Targets or wherever or Amazon or wherever you shop. So uh, that's, I just love that a lot. That's a really nice display. And then I also did something similar over here uh, with my older Anakin and Obi-Wan episode three black series figures. Again, really nice, just kind of a nice way to flank the television set here. There's a nice X-Wing model in the middle, but yeah, really looking really good. Alrighty guys, we move up this little shelf here I've got over here. I've got my three uh, Sideshow Collectibles Indoor uh, Rebel Troopers that came out several years ago. They're kind of outdated now. Not my favorite collectibles in this collection by a long shot, but they still have a place here and they're still damn, pretty damn cool. Flanked by a pair of Disney Store exclusive Stormtroopers there. Those are die cast figures that came out in the Disney Store a couple years back. I believe these came out at the same time as Rogue One did, these Stormtroopers. And then of course there's a gentle giant bust in here that I just knocked the arm off of of an Imperial Stormtrooper, so really cool. Then we move up the, the shelf here, I've got a couple Hasbro Jawas there. Still love those Hasbro Jawas, just because there's no light up effects on those eyes. They're just they're just lit up yellow. They look fantastic. You don't have to worry about turning them on. Um, otherwise, you know, if, 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 if the Jawa doesn't have eyes, it doesn't look like he has a face. I really like that a lot. Just simplicity at its finest there. Accompanied by a Metacom uh, R5-D4. This is, again, is Metacom, so it's a little undersized compared to what you'd get with Sideshow or Hot Toys. But still really nice, really damn nice figure. Spent a lot of money on it. It ought to be nice but it is undersized, but the detail on it is still amazing. So just, you know, outside of context with other 1-6 scale figures, it looks pretty damn nice. And of course, there's a 40th anniversary Star Wars uh, retro modern lunch pail there. And then moving over here, we have got the Sideshow Collectibles uh, Jabba's Palace environmental set with that, with that awesome malfunctioning light control panel there with that short in the wall looking really cool with Gartog the Grimorian Guard. Um, he's really cool. He's kind of, there we go. He's really cool. He's missing a horn there. And then of course I've got some, some lighting on top of there just to kind of accent him, him a little bit, but he is really cool along with some of the environmental beasties in Jabba's palace. Absolutely awesome. Awesome looking set there. Alrighty. So one last kind of look there at my television set area, how I watch TV and oh, total shameless plug there on the TV set. Uh, do consider subscribing to Knickknacks Plastic Planet. If this is the first time you found my channel, we have a great time here. But I also keep all my movies along the bottom there. I shouldn't say all my movies, that's probably, oh, maybe a third of all of my DVDs and Blu-rays and starting to collect 4K stuff, even though I don't have a 4K player yet, but starting to make that, that dive into that particular world. So anyway, there it all is, looking really nice. So uh, yeah, that's a nice corner of the room. Let's move around here and go into the next section of the Star Wars Plastic Planet Collection. Uh, right here is, uh, speaking of those Disney ex store exclusive die cast metal figures, I did collect the entire set from Rogue One. Not a big Disney Star Wars fan, but I did enjoy that movie a lot and sort of think it's sort of appropriate there with the trailer to A New Hope behind them. Um, I, I think that movie of really, really did, uh, for me anyway, uh, make A New Hope even better. And that's hard for me to say for Disney Star Wars because I'm not a major fan, but in this case, I will uh, tip the cap, so to speak. I do like Rogue One a lot, so really, really cool. And then, of course, I've got my prequel uh, posters up here that I collected at the time of the films coming out. I think those are just 24 by 36 posters. Really, really fantastic. And then let's move over here, because this is really So special. what you see in front of you right now, this is a ginormous oil-on-canvas original piece of artwork that was done by my really good friend, often channel collaborator here on the Plastic Planet, my good friend and buddy, Uncle Pat drew that for me and well painted that for me, I should say, um, during for Christmas one year. It is absolutely fantastic. And just to give you a sense of scale of how big it is, I'm gonna put one of my beloved Diet Cokes right next to it and then just kind of back out. It is absolutely ginormous, just kind of fills up half the wall there. And it just, it just is amazing. The color, everything just pops on it. Um, the, 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 the contrast between the oranges and the whites and the blues and the grays there and the black just looks so incredible of Lord Darth Vader in the carbon freezing chamber at Bespin. Absolutely beautiful. One of my very favorite pieces here in the plastic planet. And it is really cool to have very talented friends. I will say that because if I drew that, it'd look like shit. 
But uh, yeah, my buddy Uncle Pat's an amazing artist and I am just amazingly grateful to have this piece here in my collection. Alrighty guys, we're coming down the shelf here. This really isn't a shelf, but along this wall here, do have a uh, Kenner Hasbro Star Destroyer there from the late 90s. Absolutely fantastic. I have a backlit Star Wars sign that is actually all lit up there. Um, I bought that at Hobby Lobby on, on closeout. And then over here from Disneyland, uh, from my last visit to Disneyland with the family, uh, courtesy of my lovely, lovely wife, I do have the Build-A-Droid C-3PO and the Build-A-Droid R2-D2 right here. He is really, really freaking fun. Uh, fun piece, all remote control. I do have two more Build-A-Droids downstairs uh, in the archive room slash arcade room of the Plastic Planet that I'll show you guys a full room tour of another day. Uh, but uh, this is really fun. Wanted to have these two together. Really, really awesome, cool pieces. And then right here is my refrigerator. And you know what? For years, I resisted having a full refrigerator uh, down here in the Plastic Planet because I have a refrigerator, a beer fridge in the garage. And But I don't know. I just felt like, you know, that's just being lazy. But I got to tell you, having a refrigerator down here has been epic. So it's fully stocked right now with delicious Nectar of the Gods Diet Cokes and Miller Lights. So really, really freaking awesome to have that. And then there's a stuffed Jawa right here. This is a plushy Jawa. It originally was like a Halloween Jawa. It came with a jack-o'-lantern. Well, I just cut that jack-o'-lantern off and threw it in the trash. But it looks really, really cool just by itself. They're kind of wedged in between the refrigerator and these shelves. Really, really Alrighty, cool. And then on this back sofa table here, I have my uh, EFX Darth Vader helmet there on a custom stand. That's basically a paper towel holder with a with a tennis ball shoved into the top uh, to kind of cushion that that EFX Darth Vader mask, but absolutely awesome. Um, there's a few like minor, minor like imperfections on this piece just because of my own stupidity that I showed off in another video, but it's still absolutely fantastic. And then of course, right over here is one of my favorite pieces in the entire collection. That is of course, is my Sideshow Collectibles 1-6 scale Luke Skywalker atop his Tauntaun. That Tauntaun is epically cool. Um, if you don't have this piece, I am sorry. He is absolutely awesome. I love this piece a lot. Um, the Tauntaun can, the horns can have little magnets on them so you can swap it out for a, there's another horn in the box that's all fully not, you know, cut off there. That of course is Luke Skywalker's Tauntaun because it has the damaged horn there, but absolutely cool. Love this piece so much. Just, it's just amazing. And I still don't get sick and tired of looking at it. And I love that it's one of the first pieces I see along with that EFX helmet as I come down into this room. It just really greets me. It just says, hello, welcome to your awesome room, knickknack. So yeah, I really love having this one. All right, you guys, so we're gonna kind of get to the main stay of the main, main area of the, the collection room here. And first of all, I do have my vintage Ewok Village with uh, some vintage Star Wars figures on it. A lot of these are from my childhood. The Ewok Village itself, I only bought recently off eBay. Uh, just within the last two years, but it looks really good on that little yellow table there right next to my Detolves. I've got a nice case here. This has all of my read-along records in it. Actually, I have more read-along records of Star Wars. I had replacements over the years because I just ran these into the ground as a kid. But this is one of my favorite little little uh, little displays I put together there. There's, of course, is the Return of the Jedi story, uh, the record itself with the, with the company uh, book. The Empire Strikes Back in Star Wars, the original Star Wars. Things look really good there in that little picture frame. Absolutely dig it. Up here is a, uh, these are older pieces. That's an older sign show collectible, Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia. Kind of tried to put them in sort of a, sort of a little bit of a remake of the uh, New Hope movie poster. I don't know, it's kind of dumb, but I think it looks kind of cool. And of course there's some tin comic book covers there uh, from the original Marvel run from back in the day, back in the early, late, early 80s of The Empire Strikes Back, really cool. Alrighty guys, well let's get to the Detolfs here, but first, I've got some stuff below my Detolfs on these, uh, s these sort of like hodgepodge Ikea uh, lac tables that I sort of modded into shelves. Had these, these really heavy Detolfs on these shelves for that I made for several years now and I've never had any problem. Every now and then I do get out a level to make sure everything is good and there's no warping or bending there. And there doesn't seem to be. It's like I said, these have been on there for years. I think that weight is distributed pretty evenly across those. So that's probably part of part of what's helping it out. So I don't worry too much about it. But uh, yeah, but I, I do think it looks fantastic. I've got some vintage pieces down here. I have my vintage Empire Strikes Back Hoth playset, Probot turret Hoth playset there. You can you guys can hear the R2D2 beeping back there. That's the Disney land build a droid r2d2 talking to me uh he's pretty cool but anyway yeah this is pretty neat this is pretty awesome set down there some vintage figures vintage probot 
vintage Princess Leia, vintage uh, Rebel Commander. Just, yeah, really cool. And of course, here's the Land of the Jawas playset. Really awesome. I know if you're a longtime subscriber, a lot of these pieces are getting a little redundant to see again, but I don't know. That's the, the, that's the danger of a room tour. But anyway, this is a fantastic piece. That, of course, is the Land of the Jawas. Uh, playset from Kenner from the 1978-1979. Uh, that sand crawler is cardboard. That is 41-year-old cardboard, and it's still holding up pretty good. I got to be kind of careful with it when I dust, but it's still holding up pretty good. And of course, that Jawa was from my childhood. That Stormtrooper is from my childhood, but that Dewback I bought more recently. So that's really damn cool. Over here is a vintage Kenner Millennium Falcon that I've been restoring. Uh, for years now, and I haven't gotten very much done on it. It's just kind of collecting dust, but it's here, and I keep it in a nice place to remind myself to every once in a while go on eBay and look for parts for it, but, uh, you know, someday I'll get it done. Someday. Alrighty, and then finally, uh, and I apologize, I should have dusted this shelf. I thought I dusted everything down here before the room tour, but, uh, you know, I kind of forget sometimes, but anyway... Here is my vintage uh, Job of the Hut playset with my Max vintage Max Rebo band and a couple of Jabba's cohorts there hanging out the Gamorrean Guard Regis and uh, and uh, what's his face Squidhead. So that's pretty damn cool. And then of course there is the Battle of Sarlacc Pit game from Parker Brothers: Return of the Jedi. That is from my childhood, uh, as well as a lot of these figures here. But that is an absolutely awesome piece. I used to love playing that game as a kid, and I've always just adored that box art. So it definitely has a definitely has a prominent place here in the Plastic Planet, even to this day. Absolutely love that one. Let the Wookiee win. Alrighty, so all that aside, let's get to these details now, guys. I'm gonna try. To, I'm probably gonna open these up so you guys can see in without the the burden of uh, of any reflection coming off the glass. But let's start out with this one right here. Let's pop this guy open right here. I showed this off recently, recently unboxed this and reviewed it last fall or early last winter. That is of course my one quarter scale Hot Toys Darth Vader, I believe from Return of the Jedi. Absolutely awesome piece there. I do have his base lit up. I didn't light up his uh, his control boxes because I think they'll go out pretty fast. And I complained at nauseum about the light up features on these, uh, on these Hot Toys pieces so we don't need to go over that now in this video but still absolutely stunning looking figure really glad to have him and then as we move up here is my dx7 battle damaged luke skywalker and i actually have two different stands going on here this is the stand he came with but then this stand came with my ig88 from uh sideshow and i just thought it'd look better with luke skywalker all lit up there so looking really cool and then of course i bought that background there off ebay really nice of course i got a little glare coming off of it but still pretty cool and then up here, I never bought the Hot Toys Emperor, and I'm sort of regretting it because this guy's getting a little dated, but he's still okay. That is, of course, the Sideshow Collectibles Emperor Palpatine with his with his uh, his Dias there, his throne, which is sort of it's actually uh, polystone, unlike the Hot Toys, which was plastic. That one is actually polystone, so in a way, that one's a little nicer, but the figure is a little bit uh, outdated. Still not too bad. I have him on a high shelf. And so I do have the Emperor represented here in my collection, just not in the latest and greatest, but that's okay. Alrighty guys, coming down the next Detolf uh, here, I've got two figures from Rogue One, two really good, awesome figures. That of course is the Jen Urso there in Imperial Disguise, a company there with K2SO, K2SO. This is actually, he's probably my favorite uh, new character in all of Disney Star Wars. Really do dig me some K2SO and Jen Urso is pretty awesome too. So those two figures are up there. Uh, K2SO's eyes actually do light up, but uh, that would require me to get on a step ladder, and I don't really feel like doing that right now. But still, really cool looking figures up here. I like those two. I love how they uh, they really do accompany each other very, very well. Again, I'm very much into uh, accompaniments with my display choices. Uh, I think just by themselves, these figures wouldn't look that great, but together they look absolutely epic, and I'm really glad to have them there. Moving down the shelf, I've got my... Uh, Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker there. I have both the regular Jedi Luke Skywalker from Hot Toys as well as the Deluxe. I've kind of mixed and matched their bodies on there. Uh, and I'll show you guys what I mean more so in a minute. But here is part of that, that fig, those two figures together there. I've got the windswept hair, which is so iconic from the uh, from Return of the Jedi, from the Return of the Jedi movie poster. Uh, so he looks really damn cool. And sort of a dynamic battle pose there with this swinging lightsaber effect that Hot Toys gives you. I do dig that a lot. That looks really good. Um, that is one of my favorite Luke Skywalkers there uh, with a Return of the Jedi vintage uh, soundtrack uh, 
LP behind him, so that looks really good in a frame. Then, of course, right here is my Empire Strikes Back Yoda from Hot Toys as he's levitating some rocks there, just meditating in the force. That looks so good, so cool. So those two pieces look really damn good together. I think eventually, maybe, as I mentioned in previous videos, I'm going to get like a backdrop, like a sail barge backdrop for this Luke Skywalker, and then maybe move Yoda out uh, somewhere else. But yeah, right now they look really good together. Really good. Alrighty, guys, and coming down the detail here on this shelf, there's a couple, couple rare figures here. Uh, that General Grievous is epic. That is the General Grievous from Sideshow Collectibles. Figure's a little wonky to pose, a little wonky to stand. I, he is challenging. I can't get mine in any t any dynamic poses, you know, with his lightsabers, you know, with his with his quad arms and the lightsabers all outreached and in and, and some menacing pose. So I kind of have him just sort of laid back, kind of hunched over with his arms behind his back as if he's giving troops to his droid command, droid army. But he looks good. He looks good. And then, of course, there are some Trade Federation security droids there. That was a two-pack that came from Sideshow a couple years back, more than a couple years back now. And then I sort of have a cheesy uh, backdrop there that I personally made out of some some space photo I had. And then, and then some that is literally some packing out of something I bought, like, I don't know, spray painted it sort of a, a gunmetal gray or whatever. And threw it in here. It's not the best, but it looks it looks better than the, the, the back side of the detail. So I don't know. I kind of dig it. It looks good. And then finally, to finish off this detail right here is my Hot Toys Empire Strikes Back Hoth Princess Leia with my Sideshow Collectibles Han Solo from Hoth. Looking pretty damn dynamite there with a little bit of a little bit of a tiny backdrop there. Kind of looks like a hallway almost uh, with Echo Base behind him. But that's a really nice, nice ensemble, nice coupling of figures there in this particular detail to finish off this one. Alrighty guys, starting out on num detail number three now, I have Sideshow Collectibles Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi from a couple years back. Uh, partnered up with a much older Sideshow Collectibles Qui-Gon Jinn. I know there's a new Hot Toys coming out. I haven't pulled the trigger yet on that one, although I might still. But I don't know. I still, I don't know. It's hard for me on certain characters that I still have, even if they're older Sideshow. Because some of those older Sideshow, for me at least, still hold up. I mean, maybe I'm not as much of a figure snob as other people are. And I don't always have to have the latest and greatest on every character. And maybe Qui-Gon is one of those, although I do love Qui-Gon, played by the great Ian Neeson, but uh, still cool. Then, of course, there's this part of that other backdrop there with the General Grievous there. I just made out of some, some packing styrofoam and some paint, so I think it looks okay. And then coming down here, I have my Hot Toys, New Hope, Darth Vader, flanked by two Sideshow Collectibles Stormtroopers. I think those Stormtroopers still look pretty good. They're not as good as their Hot Toy companions, but they still look pretty good, especially as background pieces to that Darth Vader who looks absolutely awesome and menacing there as he is kind of walking along the corridors there of probably the Death Star or a Star Destroyer. Maybe he's on a Star Destroyer about to board the Tanavi Tanavi 4 to go kick some ass in the original film. Looking really, really awesome. And then finally on this, this set of details, I've got a double shelf here, and that, of course, is the... Uh, Sideshow Collectibles, 1-6 scale, uh, Han Solo and Carbonite piece from Jabba's Palace, accompanied by the standard Gamorrean Guard, which still looks really good. And of course, I just have a 8x11 uh, eight, uh, eight uh, picture, studio picture of C-3PO and R2-D2 outside of Jabba's Palace from Return of the Jedi. But still, this is really good, really nice looking piece. I've just kind of got it on a acrylic stand there, but looking really, really nice. I love the way that one looks. Although the 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 carbonite slab is never quite sat right on that peg. It kind of kind of sits a little crooked. But other than that, it's a great piece. No real complaints. Awesome. You've taken your first step into a larger world. Alrighty, you guys ready for detail number four? Well, I sure am. Uh, and to start off, we got a goodie up here. This, of course, is my classic Sith Lords section, or shelf, I should say. I've got the uh, original hot, uh, Sideshow, not Hot Toys, Sideshow, uh, Darth Sidious up there. Uh, he came in that Darth Sidious Chancellor Palpatine, Palpatine two-pack that came out several years ago. And also there is the original Sideshow Darth Maul that came out in the late 2000s. He still holds up. I have hesitated, just like Qui-Gon, in getting an updated Darth Maul. I know I, although I know I have a lot of options available to me in that respect, both from Sideshow and from Hot Toys. I just haven't pulled the trigger because I still don't mind this one too much. I think he looks pretty damn good. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what I like to say. I'd rather throw money at other things than figures I'm pretty happy with overall. You know, you know, if someone gave me one, I wouldn't complain too much. But, <laughs> but yeah, he looks good. And then, of course, back there, sort of a rare figure. That is the Sideshow Collectibles uh, Star Wars Expanded Universe Darth Malgus figure. Really, really awesome 
imposing piece. I know he is from, I believe he's from Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he is absolutely awesome. Really, really cool figure. And then coming down here, we've got a couple really awesome pieces that I, I made it a priority to collect uh, in my collection just because of my love for uh, the Luke Skywalker and Stormtrooper uh, disguise from the original Kenner Star Wars line that I never owned. So I made a point to like collect every single one that's come out over the years. And by extension, then of course, Han Solo and Stormtrooper uh, disguise. So I have both of these. These are from Hot Toys. Absolutely awesome pieces. Like I said, things. sometimes you need to collect things and, and display them as companion pieces. And what, what better figures to display as companion pieces than these two? Uh, looking really, really damn awesome. And of course, that uh, Death Star, uh, that Death Star wall piece does light up as well behind Han Solo. So really good looking piece. And then down here from Sideshow Collectibles, all lit up. And I need to get these guys turned off here soon because they're probably going to run out of battery juice. Is my Sideshow Collectibles R2D2 and my Sideshow Collectibles C3PO came out just a couple of years ago. Still hold up really, really nice. I kind of made that little detail shelf or a diorama shelf with them, kind of mod podge down that sand, and then of course kind of put together that little uh, that little desert background behind them as if they're lost on the dune sea there, uh, arguing amongst themselves, really, really cool. And then down here, one more shelf is my bounty hunter shelf, sort of a mishmash of different figures here. The IG-88 is from Sideshow Collectibles from a few years back, so is that Bosk. That was from the original run of Bosk from Sideshow Collectibles. Then of course, that uh, that Zuckus back there, not for Lom, Zuckus, not to get it confused like Kenner did back in the day, that Zuckus is a Hasbro Zuckus, but it still looks really good. I mean, if it, like I said, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And for a background character, I think it looks pretty damn good right behind that Metacom. I did say Metacom, Boba Fett, which I have. I would like to get a more modern Boba Fett, and that is definitely on my priority list right now. But for right now, he still looks really good, and he holds up pretty well. I think he's a little undersized next to these guys, but not too bad. Not that I can really notice. That's a nice shelf. Alrighty, guys, and our last detail along this wall here features two Anakin Skywalkers, both from Hot Toys. I have the dark side Anakin Skywalker up here. Don't think you guys are going to be able to see with the lighting, but he does have those Sith eyes. That lightsaber does light up, but it's such a pain in the ass because the switch is literally underneath his gauntlet there that I'm not going to do it. But I did light up the base here, which of course is that Mustafar lava droid. Really, really cool. I love the lava effects there, how they just kind of jump out. And then of course over here is the regular version of Anakin Skywalker, or the Jedi Anakin Skywalker, looking really cool. Got a little Mustafar base there with some lava rock. And then I did augment this particular detail. That's actually a Halloween light that would go outside of your house. It's all LED, burns really cool, but it kind of gives that sort of volcanic uh, reflection there against that that white, uh, that white w contact paper I have on the back side of the detail there. So it looks really freaking cool. Um, I love, I love the effects there, even though that lightsaber kind of gets lost if it's not light up, but that's okay. looks really cool. So that's like half the detail here. And then as we move down, I've sort of got a Tatooine scene here with both my hot toys, uh, not hot toys. I'm sorry. Sideshow collectible Jawas. And both of these have light up heads and, but you literally have to take their whole wrapping off to do it. It's such a pain in the ass. I'll just, I'll do it for you real fast. It's such a pain in the ass just to give you guys an idea of how it looks. If I can do it. There it is. So it lights up nice, but then you gotta put the freaking the freaking cloak back on. So yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose. But anyway, it looks cool. There's the, there's the two Jawas there. They'd look great if they had an easier switch on them. And that's sort of why I like the simplicity of those two Hasbro Jawas I showed you earlier in the video. But anyway, they are, they are flanking there my Sideshow Collectibles R5-D4, which is a fantastic figure. Um, love all the accessories. The little pop-out motivator there, his antenna, the little, uh, the little uh, restraining bolt there. Really, really cool. And then sort of a rare figure back there and still holds up beautifully. One, one of the best figures in my collection is that old Sideshow Collectibles Tusken Raider um, with flanked there by some smaller pictures from the uh, special edition, the Sandcrawler, and then the Dewback, and then the old Bantha Tracks patch. If you're a longtime Star Wars fan, you're going to know what Bantha Tracks is from going back to the original Star Wars fan club from back in the 80s. Really damn cool. And then down below here is just sort of my Jedi Knight collection there. I've got, I've got, a, I've got a Mace Windu and Plu Kloon and Kit Fisto and what's her name? I can't remember. I'm drawing a blank. The blue Talit character. She's awesome. Um, yeah, so these are all really cool. They're, they're older figures, but they still hold up. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic.
Alrighty guys, well that is going to do it for this Detolf bag. This is a rather large Detolf bag. I'm going to step back and give you guys one more little peek at the entire thing. And I didn't mention, I do have some pieces up top there. Those are all those gentle giant um, animated maquette inspired pieces that came out several years ago. I think they're mostly inspired from the, I hope I don't butcher his name, the Jendi Turkowski uh, animated micro Clone Wars series and then of course there are some original trilogy renditions of some characters in that st same stylization up there as well so really really cool cool looking figures I'm kind of reaching way up there got my uh, got my camera or my phone I should say on a little bit of a tripod here kind of a kind of a handle tripod here so just trying to give you guys just a nice look see at those figures they are way up high though and i'm not exactly a tall man so uh <laughs> so there they are anyway let's move on to my next a detolf bank over here and this one only has three so this one won't take nearly as long and we'll start off on the top there i've got some sideshow collectible uh standard battle droids uh, those are absolutely awesome figures these are this is a kotobukiya or play arts kai i believe uh two pack there of Darth Vader and Boba Fett. I think they were actually sold separately. I can't remember for sure. I know I bought them at Barnes & Noble a couple years back, but uh, they do go on that stand rather nicely. I can't remember if they were sold separately or not. But anyway, there they are. Really cool. Premium format Anakin Skywalker right now, right here from Sideshow Collectibles. That's a that's an 18-inch statue. Really cool. That lightsaber lights up, but the batteries are out in it right now. Uh, behind it, speaking of the Jendi Turkowski Clone War series, that is an animation cell from that series very very cool i don't know if it's a re it's probably a reproduction i don't know for sure but my wife got that for me several several christmases back really damn cool one of my favorite gentle giant pieces uh in my collection right here this is a mini bust of admiral akbar i love this piece a lot it just looks really really damn dynamite um, if I don't say so myself, I just, just everything about him, the sculpt, I love his eyes. They're almost like marbles in there. Really, really damn cool. Uh, back, back behind him is the second part of that two pack. I just showed you with the, on my Sith Lord shelf. That is of course the Chancellor Palpatine that came with the uh, Darth Sidious that is over in that other Detolf bank. Right there is my gentle giant, uh, Count Dooku and Asajj Ventress statue. That's a beautiful statue and it's very different from everything I have in my collection there's a little bit of a i don't know there's almost a little bit of almost sexual innuendo in that statue really rare in a star wars piece um it just you have the dignified count dooku there and asajj ventress kind of draping herself over him as if she's sort of trying to tempt him in some you know some inappropriate manner just really damn cool um over here is my sideshow collectibles han solo the empire strikes back bestman version that's a really old figure i'm looking forward i hope uh, hot toys does come out with a uh, bestman han solo really soon uh, this figure is long overdue for a redo on that one and that that would be one unlike some other characters i would not hesitate to uh to buy uh, there's a uh, Hasbro Titanium Series Diecast Millennium Falcon right there. And then we have more Kotobukiya Play Arts Kai uh, droids there. That's I can't remember this guy's name, but I know he is from the... Uh, I can't, I, every, time I, every time I ever film him, I forget his name, but uh, I think he is from the uh, Empire Strikes Back in a uh, kind of a background scene. And there's an astromech there as well. I can't remember his name either. I have the boxes downstairs. I'd have to go look. But anyway, they're really cool. I love them. These, these uh, bases are magnets, so they're kind of they're stuck on there. So really nice, nice, uh, solid pieces, even if they are, you know, a plastic kind of vinyl construction. Really, really solid. Let the Wookiee win. Alrighty, going down the first detail here, and I have it lit up, at least the display base, for the first time uh, in one of my videos in a very, very long time, probably since I originally reviewed it. Uh, the figure itself does light up, the chest make the the chest piece does light up as well as the two uh belt boxes um his environmental chest piece does light up but i'm not gonna light those up right now but anyway this is my one six scale empire strikes back uh darth vader i did review this on the channel in all its glory a little over a year and a half ago maybe now and uh, this figure is actually seeing some more traction because Hot Toys is re-releasing it for the 40th anniversary of The Empire Strikes Back in retro packaging. Uh, I won't be ordering that one because I have this piece here, but it's, you know, it's just a dynamite piece. One of my favorite 1-6 scale 
uh, action figures and one of the best Darth Vader's I own in my collection outside of probably that that uh, quarter scale Hot Toys figure that I have over in the other Detolf bank. Uh, this is a sideshow piece. This is sort of an accessory piece. I'll show you the Vader that came with. It's really dusty. I apologize. Probably should clean that up. Then moving down the shelf, this is really, really cool. And sort of a sort of a rare figure now. Uh, this figure kind of, I think he goes for a lot of money. I have no idea. I don't really price my figures as far as value because I have no intention of selling them. But this is the Empire Strikes Back Luke Skywalker in Snowspeeder Hoth gear so to speak and he looks absolutely fantastic and i did get that background piece for him or that background uh it's it's basically an adhesive uh uh, uh backing for the detail here i got that off ebay a while back but he looks absolutely fantastic i love this piece a lot and uh yeah i love the little snow drift that accompanies his stand there looking really good i did put this throw this hasbro snow speeder in there got that several years ago just thought having that crash snow speeder would look pretty damn cool in there as well so that's a that's a really nice shelf that's one of my favorite shelves here actually i dig that one a lot and then down here along that same theme i have the imperial probot or the imperial probe droid that's the second version that came out the first version had a nicer snow stand i kind of wish i would have gotten that and eventually one of these days i'm going to get an acrylic rod to, 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 to mount this on so that you don't see that rod because that rod is so kind of takes away from the piece a little bit in my opinion because it kind of looks like part of the figure which is a which is sort of a sort of a travesty because it's a great figure on its own it actually looks really really fantastic so uh, there's some room for improvement there but it looks good it looks good and then down below here these are both sideshow collectible uh, Hoth snow troopers looking really cool I had one and then my wife got me another one uh, for Christmas one year and she was actually mad that she bought me a figure I already had and I was you know I said I said this in a room tour video going back a few years ago I was like you know hey babe it's it's all good it's it's army building so yeah really glad to have both of these they look really really fantastic Alrighty, guys moving down the shelf here I have a sideshow collectibles uh, Darth Vader that is the deluxe Darth Vader that was basically Darth Vader 2.0 from sideshow collectibles that came out a number of years ago uh, he comes on a light up stand that's a nice light up stand there it's not lit up right now but with the imperial logo and sort of a sort of has a meditation chamber uh, symmet symmetric feel to it uh, very very cool and then of course over here is my hot toys royal guard kind of being a companion piece for him uh, and behind him is a vintage Empire Strikes Back soundtrack LP but that, that Hot Toys Royal Guard is a really fantastic figure. I love everything about it. And I also did a really kick-ass video for it uh, about a year ago. If you ever want to go back into my videos and check out that review I did for that Royal Guard, I sort of did a little bit of a sort of off-color sketch for it. It was, it was a lot of fun to make. So uh, check that out if you ever get a chance. Uh, right here, I actually have some uh, Black Series figures. I think these were Disney Store exclusives. I'm not positive, but I bought these at the Disney Store. Uh, that is, of course, BT1 and Triple Zero. I think I'm saying those names respectively correct. Uh, these are from the Marvel Comics uh, Vader series. And, you know, again, I'm not a big Disney Star Wars fan, but I will give props when props are due. And, and these are amazing characters. Sort of the sinister alter, alter egos of uh, C-3PO and R2-D2. Um, just very, very fun, evil, maniacal uh, droids there that are sort of a uh, sort of in uh, Darth Vader's pseudo inner inner circle. So very very cool comic book and very very cool character. So glad to have them in my collection. Going down to my next shelf, I've got Luke Skywalker in his X-wing fighter gear from A New Hope from Sideshow Collectibles. That's a nice piece as well. Uh, bought that just a couple years back. Uh, behind him is another LP record. That is the soundtrack to the original Star Wars. That is a vintage. Uh, record back there in a uh, in an LP uh, frame and then right here is a Bandai model kit that I actually built on this channel uh, in the infancy of this channel is one of my earliest videos and I'm not the best model maker in the world but I think I did an okay job on this one even though some of the some of the decals are kind of coming up on me there on the on the turrets but uh, still really cool and it's of course tossing some proton torpedoes down the Death Star exhaust port which is represented by this uh, Hasbro uh, die cast I think that's Hasbro. Maybe that's Galoob. I can't remember, but it's like a die-cast micro machine uh, Death Star there. Very cool. And then, of course, these um, these laser blasts coming out of the turrets there. Um, that's my own custom job there. Believe it or not, those are just WD-40 straws. So, I don't know, kind of cool. I don't know. It's a sort of a sort of a dumb mod, but I think it looks pretty cool. And then coming down here on this second-to-last shelf, I have my Return of the Jedi Hot Toys uh 
Imperial Stormtrooper. I just reviewed this on the channel in my last video uh, when I also did a very, very cool, I think, not to toot my own horn, but a very, very cool uh, homage to the story of the Empire Strikes Back uh, using one of my read-along uh, records. So that was very, very cool. A lot of uh, a lot of throwbacks and vintage fun in that video. Uh, behind him is the uh, Sideshow Collectibles uh, at at driver. So he's really cool. Got him about two years ago. And then that that Imperial Tie Fighter pilot. Believe it or not, that is a 20 year old action figure, and he still looks really really damn good. That is a marmot. That was an import, and that was way before Sideshow, way before Hot Toys was doing their things. Marmot was making some pretty respectable action figures and i think this figure still holds up if you guys have a marmot let me know in the comments section i dig marmot i don't this is the only one i ever got there was an ad at driver there were stormtroopers there was talk i actually pre-ordered a darth vader but it never got made um, that would have been an interesting vader to see um, if it ever actually got into production but anyway marmots are really cool and i still have my marmot i think i spent 50 dollars on him back in the day and uh still an amazing premium piece uh, to my collection. And then down below here on the last shelf, I have got a Sideshow Collectibles uh, Rebel Soldier, I guess. He's from the Tanavi 4 Can't remember his name. Fleet Trooper, I guess he would be. And then a, a, a cadre of Imperial Droids. These are Sideshow Collectibles. Uh, I can't remember their, their call names, but two of those, the black ones are Imperial Droids. And then this is a prototype R2-D2, which is all silver. He's really cool. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, we are almost done with my details here. Here's the last one. This shelf is sort of a sort of my uh, Princess Leia um, shrine, so to speak. There, I've got the original premium format Princess Leia. This isn't the new one. This is the older one. I still think it holds up pretty damn nicely. She looks great there. It's still a great piece. And then, of course, right over here is a Sideshow Collectibles Leia as Boosh figure. Really damn cool. That came out in the Scum and Villainy collection from years ago. And right below it is a. Uh, Leia as Boosh, uh, Gentle Giant piece. This one I decided to put the helmet on. So one of them I have the helmet off. The other one I have the helmet on, which is really cool. And then right over here is a Hasbro Princess Leia, sort of a pseudo statue piece that came out several years ago. I think it's like, it was like the Unleashed collection line. I can't quite remember. It's been a number of years. But anyway, there she is standing rather triumphantly there in her Slave Leia outfit, um, holding up a holding up a long force pike, really damn cool. And then right there is uh, the tabletop from Obi-Wan Kenobi's house. That's an older piece. I can't remember, what, I think that came with my deluxe R2-D2 from Sideshow, but that piece sort of lights up. It's pretty cool with the uh, holographic Princess Leia there. And then moving down the shelf, I've got my Sideshow collectibles, Lando Calrussian that still really holds up. I wouldn't mind getting an updated Lando Calrussian in some form. I know the skiff guard Lando's coming, but I would almost rather get like General Lando as depicted in that, that 8x10 behind them there. Uh, I think that's the most coolest Lando ever. Uh, not that Empire Strikes Back Lando isn't pretty awesome as well, but still, I would love to get that piece. And then, of course, right next to him is my Sideshow Collectibles uh, Empire Strikes Back. I'm sorry, that's a Hot Toys Empire Strikes Back uh, Leia from Bestman. Just reviewed that piece here on the Plastic Planet just a couple weeks ago. You guys can go back and check out that video in all its glory. And then below it here is sort of my sequel uh, Hot Toys figures. Not sure what to do with these. I'm not a big fan of the sequels, but I still have a couple figures that I bought. Uh, prior to The Last Jedi coming out, and I'm not going to get into uh, into that too much, but I basically stopped collecting anything sequel related after that film. So the, the, these guys are kind of hiding down here. Not that I don't love that Luke Skywalker, and I love that Finn figure too. They're great pieces. Hell, the, hell, the uh, First Order Stormtrooper is awesome too. Um, but uh, you know, they are what they are. Alrighty, guys, a couple more pieces as we work down this particular shelf here at the end of the room. Got this awesome, I think this is a Hasbro Darth Vader statue. And it's supposed to be sort of an homage to the old Kenner Darth Vader statue that came out in the 1990s. If you're an old time collector, you might know what piece I'm talking about. And I can't remember the name of it specifically, but I think this was a more modern homage to that particular statue. Um, it's it's loose, it's not really, it's more plastic. It sort of has a polystone feel to it, but most of it's very plasticky. Still very nice piece. It's more of a dramatic Darth Vader pose there. Not my favorite Darth Vader piece by any stretch, but still fun. And of course, over here is an older uh, Cotabakia uh, larger scale um, 
model kit. This, of course, was R2-D2. And C-3PO there, as depicted from the end of A New Hope. Got this piece when, uh, when one of my children was born. I think it was my firstborn when we were in the hospital. It got delivered. And I remember calling up Uncle Pat. This is 14 years ago to ask him to get it off my doorstep. So just the things you remember. All of my collectibles here. Almost all of them have a story behind them. I, I can remember, usually remember when I bought them, where I bought them, or if someone bought them for me. And that's, you know, that's what collecting is all about, is remembering those little, little stories. And like I said, each one of my pieces sort of have a story like that. And this one was kind of special in the fact that it came delivered to my house when I was at the hospital when my wife was, um, when my wife and I were having our firstborn. So that was kind of cool. Down here, speaking of stories and collectibles, this is my, uh, my vintage Micro World uh, playset collection. These I've had since I was a kid, except for that middle piece here with the breakaway window. That piece actually I bought as an adult to complete this set. But again, most of these are from my childhood. So again, and there's some dust down here. I'm really sorry, guys. I should have dusted uh, a little better. But anyway, a lot of these pieces, everything has a story. All collectibles have a, have a history. And that's what makes them collectibles, in my opinion. That's what makes them special. Uh, down here, I got some tin figures that were gifts. And then there was a, that's a Stormtrooper head um, piggy bank back there that I bought at Disneyland a couple trips ago. I think it was before I was doing the YouTube thing. Uh, bought that piece. It's, a, it's like I said, it's a piggy bank. It's really damn cool. And then over here, I've got a number of my different comic books and source books and all kinds of cool shit. Uh, visual histories. There's the entire Clone Wars series from Dark Horse in graphic novel form. Here's the, uh, here's the, the Steve, uh, Sand Suite action figure archive book that came out a number of years ago. Just some really good stuff here. Um, here's the Vanity Fair, uh, the Vanity Fair piece that came out in 2005 with the entire cast of the prequels and the original uh, trilogy all in that in that photo shoot there. Really cool stuff. There's just some really, really damn cool things in here. Uh, the, the Art of the Empire Strikes Back, a lot of Ralph McQuarrie love in there. There's just some really, really great shit. Um, here is an old illustrated uh, Star Wars collectible book from the 90s just showing off the art of Star Wars and, and the, the making of it and then a lot of the merchandise that went along with it um, really really fun really really fun stuff in this one really really cool so there's a lot of different source stuff down here these are like my favorite Star Wars books uh, an old technical journal from the 90s just awesome shit so anyway, over here, up here, I should say, this is my uh, droid, not my droid factory, but my droid dungeon that came out in late, I think it was 1985. This was a set, this is actually a remake of the original droid factory, but just with a different paint job, probably a different, whoops, probably a different decal across the front here, but it also came with three power of the force uh, coin and coin figures as well, including uh, Barada back there. And I think that's a Mana Man or Headhunter. He's awesome. Talked about him in a previous video just recently. And then EV99 as well. Really damn cool. You know, I showed off my EV99 when I was showing off my vintage figures a few uh, videos ago. I forgot to mention that her mouth moves. Check it out. Yeah, she is awesome. And yes, she is a she. She is a sinister bitch, but she is awesome. Um, so that is very, very cool. If I can get her to stand back up. Yep. Awesome. And then moving over here, here is my Hoth micro world play sets from when I was a kid. Um, again, all these are from my childhood. You see in here, um, they've all been scratched up and loved and some pieces lost, but they're all still there. Um, really, really cool. And then down below here, that's a sideshow collectibles, Anakin Skywalker from 2006. I want to say, uh, some collectible glasses. There's a there's a black series. Uh, what is that? A shadow trooper. I can't remember the name of him, but he was in rogue one. Really cool. Then over here, I've got a Jar Jar Banks piggy bank, a Yoda Kota Bakia figure that uncle Pat gave me my good buddy, uncle Pat, who I mentioned earlier, who did that awesome Darth Vader canvas. Uh, he bought this for me, I think as a groomsman gift. Again, all collectibles have a story, at least most of them, a gentle giant, uh, Yoda bust. And then there's a Ponda Baba, uh, 12 inch action figure that I bought at a Walmart that was going out of business, uh, in the mid two thousands. And they still had this late nineties figure in there, bought them for four 99. See again, all collectibles have a story. Uh, my original sideshow collectibles, Luke Skywalker that came out. That was the first 12 inch action figure that, uh, sideshow did when they got the license was the was the Jedi Luke Skywalker. And I remember thinking this was the epitome of awesomeness when I first got him. Like this was like action figures weren't gonna get any cooler than this. 
I remember thinking that when I got this figure back in 2006, I want to say. Uh, he's still okay, but he's kind of derpy, to be honest. Uh, but I keep him in the collection just to just to kind of remember uh, just kind of remember my old collecting habits and just to think how amazed I was at this figure and to think how overpriced I thought he was at fifty dollars at the time. Um, he's backed up by a number of my favorite Star Wars novels, a uh, number of a lot of EU love back there. And then there is IG88, the uh, the IG88 bus from Gentle Giant. And then there's a bust up, which was mini bus that uh, they were kind of little collectible mini bus that you could get at like stores like Sam Goody and and places in the mall and like media play back in the day. That's of course Darth Maul. It was done by Gentle Giant, but they were like cheap. They were like little little like mystery boxes. That's Darth Maul. So really, really cool. Alrighty, so again, on the top of the shelf, kind of the centerpiece up here is my my Jabba the Hutt uh, large 1-6 scale from Sideshow Collectibles. This is the original piece. Man, I, got, I won't lie, I've thought about buying the new one, but for $700, I just don't think it's that much better than the original to, to, to quantify paying $700 for a, basically for a replacement of something I already have. This guy still holds up. I still love the eyes on him. The coloring might be a little off. Uh, the DS might be a little off, but it's still a really damn good piece. And uh, Bib Fortuna back there, love that. Very, very cool. And then right next to him is my is my uh i actually this wasn't the piece i had when i was little i actually replaced it but it is flanked with some of my childhood figures uh the namely the empire strikes back luke skywalker there but that of course is yoda's hut with a that's a that's a repro quicksand there but it's still cool and of course there is yoda himself sitting up there on top of that hut very very cool with sensor scope r2d2 and behind him is my childhood yoda puppet that's a that's a plastic yoda puppet still holding up the hair behind him is rotting a little bit but the puppet itself is still holding up. I've had that, that in my collection for over 40 years now. Absolutely stunning. Maybe not 40, but 39 years at least. So absolutely stunning. Alrighty, guys, we are on the final leg here. Uh, right over here, I have my Hyperreal Darth Vader. I just reviewed that in my last video with a uh, with a C-3PO piggy bank, I think that is. Got that from my aunt with a knickknacks plastic planet swag on his head looking really cool with a knickknacks plastic planet poster back there over here i have a gentle giant revenge of the sith darth vader statue and i remember getting this piece back in 2005 around the same time as my firstborn was uh, uh my firstborn son was born as well and thinking that this was like the ultimate darth vader piece and that i would never need to buy another darth vader statue or collectible ever again because i had this one and this was just the beginning. So it's just sort of funny. Sort of funny the things you remember about pieces and what they meant to you back in the day and what they what they still mean to you now, but it's just, it, it, it evolves over time, our feelings about pieces. Like this was, at one point, this was a grail figure for me. And now it's certainly not a grail. It's just, it's just certainly a, a good memory um, at minimum. So it's still really cool. Uh, there's a Hasbro uh, modern uh, Han Solo on Tauntaun. There's an Expanded Universe Power of the Force 2 Luke Skywalker from, uh, I believe, Dark Empire, if not mistaken. Over here is my Death Star Vintage playset that I just bought a couple years back. This is not from my childhood. Some of the figures on top of it are, though. Um, it's a little dusty, but I always wanted to have the full uh, Death Star playset from Kenner that came out, I believe, in 1978 or 1979. And now I have it. It's absolutely awesome. The only thing that's repro on this one is some of the uh, is the spongy garbage in the garb in the trash compactor. That's repro. But other than that, it's it's all original, including the cardboard uh, backdrop there. Looking really really damn awesome. A little dusty. I apologize, but it looks really really good overall. Dig that piece. And then over here is all my vintage figures. And I'm not going to go through and name all these guys. I did that in a previous video. You guys know who these guys are. But looking really really nice. And there's my there is my vintage X-wing fighter from my childhood as well. Alrighty guys, moving along the final shelf there. There is my 1-6 scale uh, Mos Eisley Cantina Sideshow Collectibles environmental uh, piece with Greedo and Han Solo, both from Sideshow Collectibles, as well, as well as that hammerhead. He's really damn cool. Look at him. He's just chilling with his big staff having a drink. Uh, those two lights do light up, but it's a pain in the ass to turn it on, so I'm not going to try to reach behind there. This is on a, it's on kind of a shelf here. Looks good overall, but it is on a shelf. And uh, I'll just throw this Diet Coke can up there for comparison, just so you guys can kind of see what, what the scale is and how big this thing is. It's very, very big. I actually have it re, uh, kind of repositioned there on an old Detolf shelf there. 
because um, it wouldn't sit on the shelf by itself. So uh, yeah, so now it's, it's really nice and uh, secure up there, but I do have it uh, kind of uh, on that, that little platform there. Over here, I have two premium format figures. That is the first release of the Chewbacca, not the current one that Sideshow is offering. That is the original release of the Chewbacca. Picked him up a number of years ago, and when I picked him up, I thought, well, I gotta get a Han to go with him. So I did buy the original premium format Han Solo. Not a great piece. Um, definitely, there's been better Han Solo statues that have come after this, but for the time, it was nice. And I like having them in my collection, as well as some activity books and coloring books back there. Uh, both of those are from my collection. You guys can see that Return of the Jedi coloring book, and then there's that Return of the Jedi activity book that I framed up. Uh, really, really fun. Those are both from my collectibles, as well as some old birthday cards back there. Don't mind those. And there is little knickknack as when I was a little kid with my brand new Millennium Falcon and my Denver Broncos bathrobe with my Dallas Cowboy pajamas. Sort of a contrast of interest there, but or conflict of interest there, but uh, yeah, pretty damn awesome. Uh, collecting goes way back for me. It's been a 40 year journey and it just still continues today. Um, yeah, that's what I'm about here on my YouTube channel. It's not about getting the latest and greatest. It's getting the things that you love and remembering why you love them. And that's what collecting's all about right there. That's the epitome of it, that picture. So really cool. All right, coming down here, guys, I got my Lance Beater and my original uh, Tatooine Luke Skywalker from when I was a kid. Some uh, modern uh, C-3PO and R2-D2 Hasbro action figures. Uh, there is a Comic-Con exclusive uh, mini blaster there from Master Replicas. Picked that up at Comic-Con, I want to say in either 2007 or 2010. Went both of those years and picked up that one of those years, I don't remember. And then there's some modern uh, uh, Kenner, I'm sorry, Hasbro action figures. It's getting late, guys, and I'm getting tired. So I'm trying to trying to, trying to to muscle through this, uh, this tour for you guys. But anyway, there's some Hasbro uh, modern Han Solo and Chewbacca action figures there from Hoth, looking really dynamite. And moving down the shelf, I've got a just a lot of Gentle Giant love there. There's Luke Skywalker in his X-Wing fighter suit there from uh, Gentle Giant, that minibus. My C-3PO minibus, my Luke Skywalker uh, from Return of the Jedi, and Episode 2 Attack of the Clones, Anakin Skywalker. All that is from Gentle Giant. Coming around here, I've got a Oral-B vintage toothbrush still in its package. One of my coworkers gave me that as a, as a gift. Oh, so nice of him. Uh, Gentle Giant Han Solo there. My old VHS collection. All those old VHSs from back in the day. Uh, there's three different uh, versions of the original Star Wars trilogy. There, the old CBS Fox one. And then, of course, this was the... This was the 1995 release, and then this was the 1998, 1997 special edition release. And then behind, behind uh, the toothbrush there is the only prequel I ever bought in VHS. That was episode one. Uh, I bought the other ones in, in DVD, obviously, and later in Blu-ray. So very, very cool. These two are Disney Store exclusive uh, die-cast figures. They're not. They're a little larger than 1-6 scale Black Series. They're really, really cool. Very heavy. They're like paperweights. Very, very cool figures. And then over here are two Hasbro um, 12 inch, uh, R2D2 and R5D4. These two figures kind of really, really helped spurn me back into collecting back in the mid to late 1990s. That was when I was in college. And again, I was collecting three and three quarter inch Star Wars at the time, but these two really got me into collecting 12 inch as well, which probably led to my habit of buying Hot Toys many years later, Sideshow and Hot Toys, I should say, many years later. Uh, so these two are sort of catalysts in my collection as far as what got me buying shit and got me on certain collecting paths. You know, we all have those collecting paths. These two figures were certainly instrumental in for me in that sense. And then of course, back there is a Ceremonial Luke. That is a uh, that is actually a Sideshow Collectibles. I think that was a, um, a Celebration exclusive. I'm not sure. But he's really, really cool. And then down here, as we work our way down our final shelf here, guys, we're on the final leg here, I promise. This is, of course, is my Dagobah Yoda's Hut from Sideshow Collectibles. This is the best environmental piece Sideshow ever did. And the batteries are running a little low. That's why it's flickering a little more. But you guys can see those little light up uh, green lights back there. And then, of course, the flickering fireplace, which is absolutely fantastic. And so many accessories came with this thing. There's like 100 snakes wrapped around it. Uh, the old... Uh, Empire Strikes Back, Luke Skywalker there, the old Sideshow Collectibles Yoda, but it's just a phenomenal piece. I actually have this on a Lazy Susan, if I can move him without, move this one-handed without knocking over a bunch of shit, just to give you guys a little bit of a 360 on this one, because it's an amazing piece. Oh, I've got Luke Skywalker's lightsaber caught. There we go. Keep moving. 
There we go. That's good enough. But yeah, you guys can see the portal to the front there. Absolutely fantastic. You got a little Minox sitting on top of it there. Look at him. He is so cool. He actually sits on a little tiny magnet in there. They thought of everything. Uh, this was an amazing piece. And the, the, the coolest thing about it, back in the day, this only sold for around $300. Can you imagine that? $300. It was so cool. That was a lot of money for me back then because I was I had you know small children in daycare. So this was sort of a, a real, uh, I don't know, this was going out on a limb for me collectible wise, but I'm glad I, I, I sucked it up and bought it back then because I really do enjoy having it today. Really, really fantastic. Now, and over here, this is more, this is obviously a much more modern piece. This is my deluxe Luke Skywalker. I actually swapped out the body with my original Jedi Luke Skywalker from Hot Toys uh, because it's that's a little more of a chunkier body and put it under this poncho. But again, looking really, really awesome. Love that rendition of Jedi Luke Skywalker in indoor poncho. Really kind of, the reason I really wanted to buy this was because I loved this picture so much as a kid. Uh, from that activity book. So I really wanted to have this particular version of Luke Skywalker in my collection. Again, all collectibles have a story. They all have individual meanings for all of us. And that's what meaning this one has for me. Over here is another Vader that I thought would be the ultimate Vader in my collection. I would never need to buy another Darth Vader again. That is, of course, is the Sideshow Collectibles premium format original Darth Vader that came out in the mid to late 2000s. Don't remember the exact date on him. Uh, his uh, Some of his light-up features are a little washed out compared to more modern versions, but to its credit, it's all plugged into one central plug-in and it all goes off of one switch. It's all plugs into the wall, no batteries in this. So sometimes, sometimes the older stuff is indeed better in some ways. And uh, in that respect, this Vader is superior to some of the other ones that have come after it, even if the sculpt is not. So very, very cool. Down here is a couple older Sideshow pieces to round things out. I've got the original Darth Vader from Sideshow Collectibles and the original Obi-Wan Kenobi from Sideshow Collectibles in their duel on the Death Star. And then conversely next door, I've got the original Anakin Skywalker from Sideshow Collectibles and the original Obi-Wan Kenobi from Sideshow Collectibles from Episode 3 in this shelf. So you kind of get the kind of get the duel of the fate, so to speak, from Episode 3 and Episode 4. Finally, coming down here, I've got some Clone Wars love. I've got Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Clone Wars, General Gree back there, and then a Phase 2 Stormtrooper. All those are Sideshow Collectibles. All those are really, really damn awesome. And then my final piece is my Empire Strikes Back uh, diorama from Sideshow Collectibles. That is polystone. Very, very cool. I could never sell this piece because A, I don't have the box anymore. B, all of these little like railings are all polystone. It's so damn fragile. I don't even want to sneeze on that piece. Yeah, incredible. Uh, over here, I got some Jack Specific. I got a Jack Specific custom C-3PO that I painted myself. That's a Force Awakens C-3PO. I painted him so he would be more representative of C-3PO from the original trilogy with that R2-D2. Very cool. And then there's a Rogue One Walker. And then finally, the last piece to show you guys, I think I've shown you everything, is my do-back, my Sideshow Collectibles do-back here. This is sort of the centerpiece of the collection right uh, with the fireplace here. Let's flip on that fireplace. Ah, oh, get all cozy here. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, I actually don't want to run that fireplace too long because the heat rises up there and it gets kind of hot on my do back. So I don't, I don't run my fireplace a lot down here, but it's really cool. Looks very, very cozy. And that's a nice, nice mantelpiece if I don't say so myself. So that's it, guys. That's the collection. <laughs> I said, guys, that is the collection. Here is one more little 360 of the entire room looking really, really dynamite, as you guys can see. Yeah, I love this room a lot. This is my TV room. You know, one thing I do think about collections is that all collections need a purpose. You know, all collection rooms, I should say, need a purpose. And you know, just otherwise, it just looks sort of like a museum. This, of course, is my TV room. I, I spend a lot of time here on the couch. It's where I surf on the internet on my little computer and watch TV. And then, of course, down here, as you guys know, if you're a longtime subscriber or viewer, that's the arcade slash archive room, which I will show off to you guys uh, probably in another uh, video. I've done a lot of stuff down there as well. So that's something that'll come in the next few months. I'll do another room tour down there. But uh, that's the other wing of the plastic planet. I'm a lucky guy. I'm a lucky guy, guys. I, I, I get two rooms. My, my wife's very nice. All righty, guys. So that's going to wrap things up here on the Plastic Planet. I hope you guys did enjoy that room tour of my premium Star Wars collection. It's been a long time coming uh, since the last time I showed off this collection in totality. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, that, that little room tour there. And if this is the first time ever finding one of my videos, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. We have a great time here on the Plastic Planet. I like to think I have one of the funnest action figure collecting channels 
on YouTube, and maybe that's a big ass brag, but you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have some self confidence in this life, right, guys? But yeah, I don't know. I think we have a great time here on the Plastic Planet, and I do believe that my channel is one of the more um, authentic um, or most organic channels on the internet. Everything I have here in my collection is because I bought it for myself, and it's because I love this stuff, and I love this hobby, and I like to share it with you guys out there. So anyway, please do consider subscribing. That's all. All right, guys. Well, like I said, it's going to wrap things up here on the Plastic Planet, and guys, remember, life is oh so very, very, very short, so get out there and fill it. Fill it with some plastic crap. All right, guys, till next time. Later. Love you. Bye.